Throughout the 80s and 90s, portable tape and CD players were the easiest way to take your music with you. These players, while compact, were still not exactly pocketable, and if you wanted to take more than, say, an album or a small compilation of music with you, you'd have to bring along extra CDs or tapes. The solution was hard disk-based storage. The very first Apple iPod was by no means the first hard disk-based music solution, but it was the first one to arguably get it right, with the addition of iTunes and a pocketable size with a great design. So, what happened to the iPod? Why do we not hear or really see much about them anymore? Let's find out. Today we will be focusing on the few iPods I currently have. I used to have an early second generation 20GB iPod Classic, but I don't know where that ended up sadly. I also want to send a big thanks to Harry for donating this second generation iPod Nano for the video. In the mid to late 2000s, iPods were everywhere. Apple were the biggest seller of portable music devices with models such as the iPod Nano, a small slim device with a display, the fourth generation one I have here came in a variety of bright colours with a sleek metal design. Compared alongside a second generation model, you can clearly see they are roughly the same dimensions with a vastly different screen size. The iPod Shuffle, a music player without a screen aimed at a more sports orientated consumer, as well as the iPod Touch, which delivered most of what the new iPhone could do, minus cellular connectivity and a camera. And last of all, the iPod Classic, which used a mechanical hard disk enabling far greater capacities than either of the other iPod models. These sold super well and from memory, everyone had an iPod back in the day. If you wanted to bring your music library with you, you had an iPod. So, what killed them? The answer is unsurprisingly, the smartphone. In recent years, smartphones have dominated the mobile landscape and have basically become digital Swiss army knives in our pockets. But most importantly, at least in the context of this video, they can play music. Whether you're streaming music using Spotify or playing tracks stored locally on your device, it has become so convenient just to play music from your smartphone. If you go to the Apple website, you'll find that they barely advertise anything iPod anymore. In fact, the only thing I can find was the latest iPod Touch. All of the other models were quietly discontinued back in July of 2017. On a trip to Officeworks, I asked what iPods they had in stock. It turns out you could still buy a current generation 2GB iPod Shuffle for $74. Now that's a crazy price. In fact, you could also buy basically every type of iPod, except the classic which was discontinued a few years ago. It was clear that they were phasing them out. There were none on display and you had to ask to see them in person. So I think the main problem is that the iPods you can still buy are crazy expensive for what they do. For instance, you could easily buy a usable Android smartphone with expandable storage and the ability to run Spotify for around the same price as a 2GB iPod Shuffle at $74. In fact, here is a $24 Android phone I picked up last week. It has expandable storage and even runs Spotify as well as most modern apps. Expect a video on that really soon. Another reason why iPods don't sell well is because, well, everyone that wants one already has one. I know a few people that still use their iPods even till this day. If you're out jogging, it is far safer to bring a light, relatively inexpensive iPod to listen to music to than your expensive smartphone. The iPod Classics have become highly sought after after their discontinuation, as they could hold a massive library of music on their 160GB hard disks. Last of all, for the most part, they seem to be pretty damn reliable. All of the iPods I have here still work and continue to play music nearly 10 years after their release. It's clear that Apple have shifted their efforts and time away from the iPod, with the most recent iPod revision being the 6th generation iPod Touch, released in July of 2015. But there are people out there that clearly still want these devices. If you go on eBay, you'd be lucky to find an 160GB iPod Classic going for less than $200. Sadly, the age of dedicated portable media players has died as far as the mainstream user base is concerned. However, the age of colourful and exciting music players will live on in our memories as well as our pockets. My name's Nathan, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. If you've liked the video, feel free to leave a like, and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. If you've got any suggestions for future videos or topics you want discussed, leave a comment below. Have a good one.